begin with breaking news. Two shootings at the same address exactly one month apart. And last night, the victim was a 19 year old man. News Channel 5 Sophie Nielsen Colding joins us live from the Madison Police Precinct this morning. And Sophie, how's he doing? According to police, he has a non life threatening gunshot wound, but he was still shot, had to be rushed to the hospital. Certainly a scary experience. Here's what that scene looked like last night. Uh, you can see some of our video, our video shows what it looked like around 1030 on Barbara Lynn Way, where the shooting took place. Now we have reached out to police. We're working to find out what exactly led up to the shooting, if they have any kind of suspect description. But it's not the first time there's been a shooting on that street. In fact, exactly one month from yesterday, there there was another shooting, a drive by at the same address. Barbara Lynn Way, a 16 year old girl, was sitting on the front porch of the same home when her brother was sitting in the front yard. Police say they think the brother may have been the intended target, but the teen, teenage girl is the one who ended up getting shot had to go to the hospital. Uh, she also had what they call non life threatening injuries. So working to find out if these two shootings are connected. If so, how they are connected for now live in Madison. Sophie Nelson Colding News Channel 5. Sophie, thanks so much. A man accused of murder is behind bars in Laverne this morning. You're seeing a picture there of Trevor Wells. He was arrested last night. 26 years old. They say he shot and killed a man in his home on Natchez Court North yesterday morning. Officials have not released the victim's name to us just yet. Police say they know who hit a Metro officer and kept going. They're looking for this man, Jason Fallis. Metro police believe the 24 year old drove his Honda Civic into a marked patrol car in Madison Monday morning and took off. Officer Ashton Hill broke his leg in that crash. If you know where Fallis is, call Crime Stopper 615-74-CRIME. The Holly Bobo murder trial will continue today in Hardin County. And yesterday, one of the men who found Bobo's skull testified in court. I said, you know who this could be, right? And he looked back at me. He said, who do you think it is? And then... <laughs> A difficult day on the stand for sure for Larry Stone, who spoke about finding the skull that he immediately believed was Holly, which was later confirmed with dental records. Her skull was used as evidence yesterday as a medical examiner testified. A hole near the back of her head was consistent with a gunshot wound. Jurors were also shown several other items found near Bobo's skull, a purse, her wallet, multiple teeth and a rib bone. Our gavel to gavel coverage begins this morning at 9 on News Channel 5 Plus or streaming live on newschannel5.com. Well, the lanes along I-440 East near the 40 split are back open this morning after that fiery crash you're seeing right beside me. Man, this was something last night. Metro police tell us the car and a semi caught fire as they collided, spread to the rest of the truck there. Lanes were closed for a couple of hours. It was a cargo fire there, and then the whole place just went up, it looks like. Luckily, no one was seriously hurt. Family, friends, and fans gathering today at the Grand Ole Opry to remember the life of Troy Gentry. The 50-year-old singer died after a helicopter crash in New Jersey last week. The NTSB is now telling us that engine problems led to that crash. It killed Gentry and the pilot, James Robinson. A preliminary report by the NTSB shows Robinson had mechanical problems, and he reported those shortly after takeoff. After discussing the issue with the experts on the ground, he chose to stop the engine and glide to the runway, a maneuver he had perfected in the past. This time it didn't work. The chopper ended up crashing in a wooded area, instead killing both of those men on board.